<clears throat> Hello everybody, this is the third installment of a conjoined effort between Shantaro and Beaning. This time it's again kind of to do with the Naruto rant, but this one I wanted to, we want to take a more general approach to the concept of power scaling. And what better to talk about when, when we talk about power scaling than Dragon Ball Z? Now, what power scaling is, for anyone that's not familiar, is when they compare or equate someone's strength or durability or speed to that of something else. Like saying someone hits like a truck, or someone's planet busting, city busting, street busting, whatever. Or saying they have the durability of a mountain, or they can withstand something that would destroy a mountain. Or they're faster than a bullet, or faster than light, or faster than sound. They actually, the scaling would have to be shown relative to something. You can't just show someone moving a blurb like, oh my god, that person just went three times the speed of light. Because that's freaking retarded. No, Dragon Ball Z is pretty good with it because they'll actually show durability. I mean, they don't waste any time. Right off the bat, like, uh, first episode of Dragon Ball Z, Raditz comes onto the planet, gets shot, catches the bullet out of the air. That shows that his reaction time is faster than sonic speed because bullets do travel faster than sound. The sound from when a bullet leaves the barrel... The loud crack you hear is a sonic, is a miniature sonic boom. So he catches the bullet out of the air easily, flicks the bullet back at him, and kills him. So, for a bullet, for something that that little mass to kill somebody, he would have had to have flicked it back at him with a very great amount of force. So it shows that he's extremely strong. And then Piccolo's energy shot kills him. So yeah, it's a lot stronger than a bullet. Also, Piccolo, after Gohan transformed, destroyed the moon. It's pretty obvious what, what that means, is that his regular his regular energy blast can destroy planetoids. Um, Broly, my personal favorite, he did not waste any time power scaling with his Super Saiyan form and destroyed a planet with that little green orb thing of his, and later shot Goku with about eight of them, and he just kind of barreled through them. Goku's also been shown that his Kamehameha is, is beyond planet-busting level, and he did it point blank on Broly. Actually, I have a picture of that later in the slide. But he did it point blank on Broly, and it didn't even bother him. Uh, so. Yeah, and, uh, same thing when they showed Vegeta. When he came out of Planet Aurelia, he immediately blew it up with uh, two fingers. Now, some people AKA, argue... Wait, A.K.A. the bug planet. Yeah. <laughs> some people argue that that's filler, but if you watch Dragon Z Kai, where they said they took out all the filler... Technically, that is canon, even though, you know, some people will argue it's not because it wasn't the manga or whatever. But anyway, uh, Vegeta, when I showed his durability, okay, first off, he was hit by uh, his Gallic Gun, which was said to destroy the planet, along with Goku's Kaioken times 4 Kamehameha. So, Goku at Kaioken times 4 was already, you know, it was already implied that he would be able to destroy a planet then. Vegeta was hit by that and an own attack, and yet he survived, thus implying that Vegeta can survive planet-busting attacks. Then, Goku hit him with a uh, spirit bomb with energy from the entire planet. So, he was hit by about two planet-busting attacks that time, and he was crushed with the ape, and he was still taking on uh, three different fighters. Yeah. Well, also, it's kind of, we kind of want to talk about the aura that Dragon Ball Z people had that made them virtually indestructible. Because uh, we've, we've seen that those people could get hit by bullets, and in, even in Dragon Ball, where Goku was just a little kid, there was this one episode where Goku walked into this guy's house, and he brought an axe down on his head, and the axe shattered. It hurt Goku, but he was, but he was more pissed off about it than anything. And he, he withstood, like, missiles and bazookas and crap. Like Goku just kind of walks through danger. I don't. I would. I would talk about GT, but for some reason, Super Saiyan Four Goku seemed like he was weaker than for Super Saiyan. Remember, he he got like hurt by like nothing. Crap. Like glass clocks. Kind of like when Superman just like survived a galaxy exploding, but then like shards of glass cut his cheek. <laughs> or like he got hurt by a gas station. Exploding. Power scaling doesn't always make sense. Yeah. But it's just that a lot of the debates are based around power scaling. Like, Naruto will, I don't know, defeat somebody that, like, pain that was shown to destroy an entire village. And then, for some reason, they think that pain could, like, take on people from Dragon Ball Z because he destroyed a village with, with like, one all-out attack. 
A village is nowhere near the size of a city, though. And people in Dragon Ball Z destroy cities and planets with relative ease to prove a point. Um, Payne was dead serious in destroying the village. He didn't, like, destroy the village as some parlor trick to prove a point to his, to his buddies. He was, on, he was on a mission to kill them. I mean, that it, it, the seriousness and the actual amount of energy required are quite a bit different. Also, you have to take into consideration the percentage of his power that it required to destroy the village. I think I think one person, I think it might have been the Lightning 227 that said that a village is only a little bit smaller than a city. <laughs> this person doesn't know the difference. A city could be like like about a hundred times bigger than a village. Like, okay, an example, I could probably jog from one end of a village to the other within maybe a few minutes. Um, I could drive from one end of a city to the other, and I'd probably run out of gas before I got to the other side. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like, a, a village, I could, I could pass through a village on my way to a, to a supermarket, is basically my point. It's in a village, okay, the village has some tall buildings, but, like, compared to New York, they're kind of insignificant. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, if one story of, of, of like, a skyscraper fell off, it would crush the biggest building in, in, uh, Konohagakure. Also, another misconception that people have is because uh, later on in Dragon Ball Z, characters say that they can do something, but then they are cut off from doing so, and so thus, you know, people think that they can't do it. And then when you use this argument with Naruto and say that, well, they have never shown the ability to do that, they say that you're being biased, which is not the case. Um... A good point is when they say that, uh, let's say, characters like Vegeta or someone can't destroy a planet, even though it's been proven that they could very well easily, you know, destroy a planet. Uh, because they don't do it every single time that they fight... Yeah, because they don't start a fight by, yeah. oh, well, this fight is mildly difficult. I guess I'm just going to wuss out and annihilate the entire planet. Yeah. And just because a bad guy does a blast and it doesn't destroy the planet. On top of that, they think that every bad guy is stupid. And <laughs> if they shoot an energy blast and the character dodge and the planet doesn't just explode, then that means that they weren't planet busting. When Goku himself has even said that he'd have to restrain. Oh, on that note, there is something yeah. interesting. Oh, sorry if I cut you off. Oh, sorry. Cut. Uh, somebody that, that I was watching on the debate made a good point where he was comparing, like, an atomic explosion to an adamantium cutting laser. So, like, let, let's just, for the sake of argument, say they have the same amount of energy. The bomb has a bigger, like, surface area that it covers, so it has more destructive capability, and it would be more likely to destroy a planet-shaped object. The laser could go through stuff that the bomb couldn't. Like, let's say... I'm pretty sure Goku could probably withstand an atomic explosion. Let's just say Goku could walk through the atomic explosion... But the man cutting laser could go through his body. Yeah. The laser doesn't have a lot more energy. It's more concentrated. The, if you shot the laser at the planet, the planet won't blow up from being touched by this energy. Yeah. But the energy to destroy it is in there. It's just concentrated to, like, pierce or cut, not explode. Yeah. So it's kind of like a bomb versus a bullet. or so, I, I know that's not 100% accurate. But it's the same concept, that you can't, like, destroy a planet with, like, a laser or a small projectile. It doesn't work like that. It, the same energy could be there, but it would have to be spread out more. So that's kind of the argument that they're using key blasts to cut through the enemy, so that in the event that they miss, which happens quite a bit, they don't annihilate the planet they're sitting on. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing that you were saying a while ago with Naruto, where they were saying because he survived worse things like Chidori and all that, he can't be hurt by a bullet. Yeah. Oh, he, well, he survived. If by that you mean he let himself be possessed by a demon, then yeah. But remember, after that, he after he withstood like a two more fatal hits, he was out for a while. These people seem to think that the fox has infinite chakra and can mend his wounds for for all of eternity. He got rid of like three fatal hits, and then he was like in the hospital for quite a while, even with his regeneration. It is by no means infinite. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, well, here's a picture right here of, a uh, Point blank. <laughs> Super Saiyan, you know, Kamehameha. Oh, uh, but we're running out of time. Yeah. I'm surprised he's always take up ten minutes. Well, anyway, this has been Beaning. 
Thanks, Prince Taro. Peace out.